Hello and welcome to our lesson on the TI-84 Plus CE student course. In this video we are focusing on data and statistics and in particular analysing graphs. Some of the things we're going to look at are how to use the calc button and its functionality which is value, zero, minimum or maximum and intersect and how to select the correct graph if you have more than one graph on the graphing screen. For this lesson we're going to look at this quadratic x squared plus x minus 3 and I've adjusted the window slightly from the regular negative 10 to 10 uh, just so we get a nice view of this quadratic. And as I said we're focusing on the calc option which is above trace in blue and options 1 to 5. 6 and 7 are the calculus parts of um, the calculate options which really you do in year 11 and 12 uh, derivative and integral but we're going to focus on 1 to 5. And value will return um, a y value for a particular x value. So in this case, let's look at, say, negative, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to put a decimal point in there, negative 1 point, say, 3, and it will return the suitable y value at that point on the curve. Now, that's not a very long number for the y value, but if it was a longer number and we needed to use it in normal calculus screen, please note that we can actually just press the y value, alpha y, and it will give us that number. Equally, the x value that we had, that we used, will also be uh, stored only temporarily while we're in the graphing mode, but this may be a useful feature if you needed to then calculate something with that. Secondly, we're going to look at zero. And we know that the zeros are where the curve crosses the x-axis. Uh, there's two ways to do that. One is just to move the cursor until you get to the left of where it crosses. So we can see that's the left of where this curve crosses the x-axis. Press enter come to the right of where it crosses, press enter. We don't need to guess because there's only one zero in here and the arrows are letting us know it's in the right spot. We can press enter and there's the zero, x equals negative 2.302, etc. Notice again, if we come back to normal calculus screen and press x again, it'll give us that number and show a bit more of an exact answer because obviously the calculator had it rounded off on the graphing screen. Another way to find the zero without using the cursor it's still to go the same sort of setup, but let's say we're finding this right hand zero. Uh, we know it's somewhere between one and two, so we can simply type in one for the left bound, and the right bound is two. Again, we don't need to guess because it's somewhere between those two arrows, which is perfect. Press enter and it gives us that zero. Notice now back in normal calculus screen, if I type in X, it will give us the other zero, and we can use those values. We can even, in fact, if we need to, store them as other letters because they won't get wiped out in the graphing screen and use those in further calculations if we needed to. We're now going to look at the minimum and maximum and that would obviously depend on whether you're looking at the convex or concave section of the curve. In this case my quadratic is convex so we're going to look at the minimum and the way that we do that is very similar to the zero. We need to go to the left of where the minimum is. So I'm going to do the quick way again um, and we can see there's somewhere between negative 1 and 1. So I'm simply just going to type in negative 1 for the left bound, 1 for the right bound. I don't need to guess because it's between those two arrows. So I can just press enter and it will give me the minimum. We can see here that there's a bit of a rounding area happening on there. So I expect that it is negative 0 0.5. Um, but that's where you just need to have a bit more of an understanding of the calculator and the calculations that it's using to find the minimum. We're going to finish with looking at intersect, but for us to do that, we need another graph. And in this case, I've typed in a linear graph, uh, 1 minus x on 2, which will look something like that. And if we're trying to find where the intersect, we can see the intersect's in two places. So let's see what happens when we go to calc intersect. It asks us to choose the first curve. And the nice thing about having the CE is that it's color, so we know it's the blue curve and the red curve or the straight line, that's the second one. And then we've got to guess. The reason we want to guess is that there's two intersects. We need to move cursor, closer sorry, or cursor, uh, to the one that we want to find the answer to. Uh, so if we press enter now, there's the intersect point. And as I said before, if we come back here and type in the x value and the y value, it gives us those two um, answers from the graph. If we want to find the other intersect, then we would just go into intersect as before, do exactly the same for the first two. And I notice over here, near negative 3. So in this case I'm just going to type in negative 3 and it'll give us the answer on this intersect here. Also just note that if you're using value 
And let's say we, we wish we know will give us um, a certain y value for a particular x value. And let's say we went, um, in this case, 1, x equals 1. Uh, it will give us the answer to the blue uh, quadratic curve. But if we arrow up or arrow down, either way, it will give us the value on the, um, the straight line, the linear equation that we had as well. So just bear in mind that you can toggle between both the graphs by using the arrow up and down cursor. So thank you for watching and I hope you found that useful.